Hey everybody, welcome to DirectX 11 tutorial 43. Uh, in this tutorial, we are going to clean up some duplicate code and create a new renderable game object class. So first, let's go ahead and create the new header in CPP for our new class. And let's move these both to the graphics folder. So the issue was that we have this camera class and we have all this position data, which I want to create a game object class that can just manage the position data. And then we have this um, game object class, which I want to move to the renderable game object class. In this way, when we make anything in the future, it could also inherit from this if it needs similar functionality, like maybe lights. So first, and before we get into the camera stuff, let's look at uh, moving the current game object to the renderable game object class. So we want to keep all the position and rotation, all of that inside of the game object class. But some things that are specific uh, for the renderable game object are things like the model, the world matrix, and I think that's it. So what we're going to do is we're going to take out the model and world matrix, and we're going to take out the initialize and draw. And we are also going to change our variables down here from private to protected so that classes that inherit this can still access them. So now let's go to the renderable game object and Let's include our game object header. We're going to inherit from the game object class and set up the rest like we had it. Now, instead of update world matrix, we are actually going to call this um, update matrix. And in our game object, we're going to create a virtual function. So this will have to be overridden by any uh, anything that inherits from game object. So we're just going to put in an assert, but update matrix must be overridden. So for the things that we move to our renderable game object, let's go to our game object CPP and move them out. So the update world matrix draw and initialize, take these out, and well, what else was there? Okay, we have to update all the calls to update world matrix. So let's do that really quick. We're going to do a control H to do a replace. In the current document, we're going to replace update world matrix with just update matrix. Now, in case it's not clear, the reason that we're doing this is because the camera will now inherit from game object, but it updates uh, the view matrix differently than how the world matrix would get updated. So back in the renderable game object CPP, let's include the header, paste the code that we just took from game object, and we're just going to change where we have game object to renderable game object. Change the call from update world matrix to just update matrix. And I think we are about set up for the renderable game object class. Let's just test this out. Let's go to the graphics header. We're going to include renderable game object. Let's see what happens if we try to run this now. Okay, great. So that wasn't too bad. So now, so far what we've done, uh, it didn't really serve too much purpose because we, all we did was just make more code. But um, now we can make our camera class inherit from game object. And this is the part where it will be beneficial. So currently we have all of these set position, adjust rotation, all this stuff. Now for our camera class, we're going to include game object header. We're going to make it inherit from game object. For all of the position and rotation stuff, we can just take that out. 
we're going to change update view matrix to just update matrix. And then we can take out the vector stuff because that's all in the game object. So let's go into the CPP update that call to update view matrix to just say update matrix. We're going to take out the position and the rotation and vector stuff and then change the update view matrix to just be called update matrix. So I think that's all that we have to do. And a big plus to this is we got our camera class code down to 46 lines. Um, everything that we're inheriting from the game object is really obvious what it does, straightforward. Other than probably the set look at pose. And if we ever want to add any functionality to both our renderable game object and our camera, all we have to do is add it to the game object class. So let's test this, see if it still runs. All right, and it still runs. So that's all that we are going to cover for this tutorial. And in the next tutorial, we're probably going to look at uh, basic ambient lighting.